The objective of this demo is to demonstrate the iGlass for Isilon Sync IQ failover for NFS export by utilizing the Superna iGlass API and iGlass Post failover script. In this short demo, we are using iGlass version 1.5 that includes the iGlass REST API feature. The Sync IQ failover is managed through the iGlass Access Zone failover and initiated by using the iGlass API CURL commands. DNS dual delegation is configured to handle name resolution for failover and failback. Node JS script is created and enabled as the post failover script to unmount and remount the NFS mount on the client side. Now we want to show you the setup diagram for this demo. The, the first diagram is the setting prior to failover. We can see here that the NFS client is assessing the NFS export from the primary cluster. And the sync IQ replication pair has also been configured and it is in operation to replicate data from primary to secondary cluster. The next diagram is for failover process. I will only highlight some of the numbered processes here. For more details, you can refer to iGlass online documentation. Process number two is to initiate failover. In this demo, we will show the example of using the iGlass API to initiate this failover process. Process number 17 is the post failover step. iGlass failover job will execute the post failover script to refresh the NFS session on the client side. The next diagram is for failback process. Basically, this diagram is similar to failover process, but now it is in reverse direction. Now, we will run a demo for that. We can see from this window that we have created a token, an API token for this testing. This API key will be used as the token header for our CURL commands. And we have also created This is a post failover script and we has we have also enabled this post failover script as part of this access zone failover and also failback processes. Now we want to demo the iGlass access zone failover through the API CURL commands. As we can see from this NFS client machine, that this NFS client machine is assessing the NFS export from this IP address. So basically, this IP address is actually comes from this primary cluster. And now we want to run the CURL command to get the ID of the registered Iceland cluster on this iGlass appliance. The 
this is the CUR command that we want to execute to get the list of the Isilon nodes for our testing. And this is the response. So basically, there are two clusters, cluster 11 and cluster 12. For this failover demo, we want to do failover from cluster 11 to cluster 12. So now we want to get the list of the access zone that will be filled over. And this is the command. So we execute this command to get the list of the access zone. And this is the access zone on the cluster 11. Now, based on the IDs of the source cluster, cluster 11, and the ID of the target cluster, cluster 12, and the ID of this access zone, now we want to execute the CUR command to initiate the failover. And this is the command. When we execute this command, the API will return the job ID of this failover job. So now, we also want to monitor the status of this failover job. We can see from this status that the job has been started. Okay, and we need to wait for a while for this failover job to be completed, and then we will see that the status is completed or finished, and the status whether is this uh, completed successfully or not. Alright, after a while, now we can see that the status of this failover job has been completed and it is completed successfully. So now we can also verify that this NFS client is accessing the NFS export from the secondary cluster. Now we can see this is the IP address. This is the IP address from the IP pools on the secondary cluster. So now the failover has been completed successfully and the pulse failover script is already refreshing the NFS session. So now the NFS client is accessing the NFS export from the secondary cluster. Now we also want to continue this demo to show on the uh, fallback process. So now we want to do the fallback process. We want to run the iGlass API commands for that. The commands actually are the same, but in reverse direction. So we need to reverse the source ID and also the target ID, as well as we need to change the access zone ID accordingly. This is the iGlass API command to execute the fallback process. So when we execute this command, again, the iGlass API will give the response of job ID of this Failback process. So now you also want to monitor the failback process.
we can see here that the failback process has been started and now we just need to wait for a while until this process has been completed and we will check whether this failback process is completed successfully. Alright, now we can see from this status that this failback process has been completed successfully. So now we also can verify from this NFS client whether this NFS client is accessing the NFS export from the primary cluster. Here we are. So now we can see this IP address belongs to the IP pool of the primary cluster. So now the NFS export is accessed from the primary isolant cluster. Hope this short demo gives you an idea on how to utilize iGlass API for NFS export failover. For further information, including the commands and sample scripts, please refer to our Superna iClass online documentation. Thank you.